Hello, I'm Sarah Itam and I'm a medical doctor extremely passionate about health. I'd like to welcome you to a very special episode of the Prevention Web Series. I'm in a country which is well known for its intriguing history, efficient transport systems, authentic street food and much more. But it's also known for one particular fact. Its population has one of the highest life expectancies in the world. In fact, women here live longer than anywhere else and I've come to find out why. For this episode of the Prevention Series, I'm in Japan. in being one of Japan's most cosmopolitan cities with a heady mix of ancient culture, nightlife and cutting-edge attractions. <laughs> distinctive customs and incredible cityscapes, I'm here to investigate what may lie at the heart of Japan's impressive longevity. Is it down to diet, lifestyle or even healthcare? Or is it simply just a case of good genes? Japan has traditionally been one of the healthiest countries in the world. On average, people in Japan live about five years longer than those in America and Japanese women can expect to live four years longer than women in the UK. More than a quarter of the population are elderly citizens. That's one of the highest ratios in the world. And by 2050, Japan will have the highest proportion of centenarians on the planet. At just 4%, Japan has the lowest levels of obesity in the developed world. Compare that to the UK at 25% and the US at a whopping 32%. The Japanese consume approximately 50 grams of sugar per day. In comparison, the British typically get through over 100 grams daily. Japan has a much lower incidence of breast cancer, prostate cancer and heart disease than the UK. With all this evidence, it's clear the Japanese are doing something right. In the UK, I eat my fair share of rice. I wouldn't say it's my staple diet, but it's definitely on my plate at least three times a week. But here in Japan, rice is literally everywhere. You can have rice for lunch, rice for breakfast, and even rice on the go. Rice has been at the center of Japan's economy and culture for centuries. So does rice help the Japanese live longer? Rice is actually a low-fat carbohydrate, 
which basically means you feel full after eating it. So there's less room for snacking in between meals, particularly the sugary and fatty snacks that are common back in the West. In the UK, we often substitute rice for foods like chips, pies, pizza and lasagna, which are all high in calories and saturated fats. Many of us will opt for chips, wedges or salty French fries, rather than the healthier choice of baked potatoes. Even our first meal of the day contains more calories than we may realise, with large amounts of sugar hiding in the breakfast cereals we eat. Add to this foods such as full fat yoghurt, cheese and fried eggs and we've turned a seemingly innocent meal into a fatty feast. Should we all start eating rice three times a day? Well, not exactly. What we should be aiming for is more complex carbs. This can occasionally include rice, even better if it's brown, but also other foods such as whole grain cereals, porridge, whole wheat pasta and quinoa. These foods are more filling but are low in calories. who's been to Japan knows that it's a land of irony. And one of the most intriguing is the role vegetables play in Japanese cuisine. Whilst exclusively vegetarian meals are uncommon, the traditional Japanese diet actually includes a wide variety. And many a restaurant meal is incomplete without a serving of seasonal veg. The local produce is filled with powerful antioxidants and antioxidants are good because they may reduce cancer-causing cells in our bodies. For example, pak choy, broccoli and cabbage feature regularly at the dinner table and all have a generous amount of vitamins and minerals. But it's not only the soil that Japan relies on for its produce. They source some of their most nutritious vegetables from the sea, and there's few things they love more than seaweed. Look at that. It could be that these sea vegetables contribute in a big way to improving heart health and giving our body that well needed detox. Whilst it's debatable if it's the latest superfood, undeniably, it's low in calories, high in fibre and packed with essential vitamins and minerals. So, I've got here with me now some seaweed. And at first glance, it does look a bit like slimy spinach. But edible seaweed is filled with antioxidants, calcium and even iodine, a nutrient almost unique to this vegetable. Tasty. Vegetables also feature in a very different kind of Japanese cuisine. Locally, it's known as shoji ryu, what we might call temple food. Zen Buddhism was introduced to Japan more than 500 years ago, so it's a religion that's deeply rooted in the culture. With more than 77,000 temples across the country, the traditional vegan Buddhist diet has permeated many aspects of society. I've come to Kamakura Fushikian, a restaurant which serves traditional monastery food, to try it first hand. 
Much like Zen Buddhism itself, Shoji cuisine is kept simple and free of fancy. Vegetables are seasonal, fresh and lightly cooked. Rice, soup and tofu make up the side dishes and everything is served in a very simple, elegant manner. Exercise is a crucial part of any healthy lifestyle. So, do the Japanese exercise more than other nations? Well, yes and no. A 2009 study found that when asked, less than one third of Japanese took part in high levels of physical activity. But what the study failed to recognize is that most of their physical activity is integrated into their daily routines. Light morning exercise has been a very common part of Japanese culture. In fact, the government has been operating its so-called radio routines for decades. Citizens follow the workouts via live radio broadcasts in schools, parks and other open spaces. The sessions largely involve dynamic stretches and simple warm-ups. And whilst young people have steadily moved away from the tradition, it's still very popular amongst older citizens. Boys and girls are also getting their fair share of exercise. Surveys have established that 98% of all Japanese children walk or cycle to school. This sets up a lifelong habit of walking from an early age, which continues well into adulthood. Compared with the West, walking makes up more of the daily commute than public transport. In fact, it's estimated that the average Japanese walks over 7,000 steps per day. That's 2,000 more than the average American. And a recent UK study found that the average Briton walks for less than 15 minutes during their workday. The truth is, something as simple as walking can have a profound impact upon your health and well-being. Japan is essentially a group of islands which are surrounded by the East China Sea, the Sea of Japan and the mighty Pacific. So it's no surprise that a large part of Japanese cuisine actually involves fish. Japan is one of the largest consumers of fish worldwide. And whilst it makes up only 3% of the world's population, it consumes more than 16% of the world's seafood. To see Japan's obsession with fish up close and personal, there's no better place to come than the world famous Tokyo Fish Market.
I'm not even sure what half these things are. a strong contributor to healthy aging. Well, oily fish is high in omega-3 fatty acids, an essential constituent of the cells that make up the human body. However, our bodies don't actually produce omega-3. We have to consume it in our daily diets. Omega-3 is widely thought of to reduce the risk of heart disease and is even recommended in some dietary guidelines for those who've had a heart attack. But oily fish isn't just good for the heart. Some researchers think it could play a role in controlling inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis. And although not yet confirmed, it may also help protect against certain cancers. When placed side by side, a fish-based diet tends to be healthier than the common Western diet of meat and processed food. Red meat contains saturated fats, which slowly damage the arteries and, if eaten in excess, may result in obesity and heart disease. Now, you don't have to eat oily fish to get your regular dose of omega-3. It can also be found in plant-based foods such as nuts, soya and even green leafy veg such as kale and spinach. So it does look like fish is at least part of the reason for Japan's impressive longevity. I've had a fantastic time in Japan, but my experience would not be complete without dipping into what some may regard as the unknown. I'm off to take part in one of Japan's most ancient and enduring traditions, the onsen. Onsens are naturally occurring springs filled with water, which has been geothermally heated from deep within the Earth's crust. And because Japan is situated in a volcanically active region, the country has more than 3,000 of these hot springs. The Japanese have bathed in these pools for hundreds of years, so it's no surprise that a certain onsen etiquette has developed over time. Onsens are considered places of reflection and contemplation, and they are generally quiet, peaceful and very clean. But there's one rule above all that captures the attention of most visitors. When you enter the soothing waters of an onsen, it is essential that you are absolutely naked. Fortunately for me, onsens are traditionally segregated into male and female sections and private onsens are also available. So do onsens actually help lengthen your lifespan? Some Japanese scientists claim that people recover faster after certain surgeries when regularly bathing in onsens. Others believe it's the natural minerals in the water itself which help manage conditions such as hypertension, neuralgia and skin disease. However, despite several scientific studies, it seems we've still yet to find any definitive conclusions about the medicinal properties of onsens. What we do know is sitting in warm water for long periods of time is a great way to relax both your muscles and your mind. Back in the UK, hydrotherapy is often recommended to improve circulation, 
relieve pain and ease muscle tension. I started this journey wondering what lay at the heart of Japan's impressive longevity. Was it the role of rice and vegetables in their traditional diets? Or perhaps the national obsession with fish and relatively low consumption of red meat? Maybe it has something to do with the smaller portion sizes at mealtimes. And then there was the naturally active lifestyle, particularly through walking and cycling. What's now become clear to me is that it's not just one thing. All these factors have played a part in the health of the nation for centuries. However, things are beginning to change as Japan becomes increasingly westernised. We see a growing number of fast food restaurants catering to modern taste buds and a move away from the traditional and healthier Japanese diets. There's been a steady decline in the levels of physical activity to the extent that the government has had to introduce a number of health initiatives. High blood pressure, diabetes and other lifestyle related conditions are on the rise. There's no doubt that Japan has one of the healthiest ageing populations in the world. But if it's to sustain its top rankings in longevity, younger generations may have to follow in the footsteps of their elders in order to secure a healthy future.